It was September 6, 2017 and Destiny 2 had just launched. We got new guns, new exotic armor, and new subclasses to experiment with in a familiar Destiny universe. Players were incredibly excited and quickly started crafting their builds and strategies. One of the first standout exotic weapons was the Merciless Exotic Fusion Rifle. In this early era of Destiny 2, special weapons didn't exist as they do today and Merciless was a fantastic pick in a player's heavy slot. Its exotic perk shortened the charge time of the rifle for every non-lethal hit, making it one of the best DPS weapons of the era. If you didn't want to use your exotic weapon in the heavy slot, Cold Heart was another popular option. This is an arc-based exotic trace rifle initially available from pre-ordering vanilla Destiny 2. Its exotic perk increases the gun's damage output the longer it stays on target. When paired with many other items on this list, it was one of the best DPS setups in vanilla Destiny 2. Eventually, snipers, shotguns, and linear fusions would receive buffs, pretty much knocking Coldheart out of the meta, but for that first era, Coldheart was a dominant choice, especially against the raid boss of the Leviathan raid, Kallus. Let's talk SMGs. Risk Runner is a 900 RPM exotic SMG acquired from Hawthorne during the Red War campaign. Players could choose this SMG or two other weapons that we'll discuss later. Risk Runner's exotic perk allowed players to overcharge the weapon upon taking arc damage. This would allow players to chain arc damage while shooting the weapon in clear rooms in an instant. The catalyst extended this effect and made it so that getting kills while Arc Conductor was active would return ammo to the magazine. It's still a good pick today, although it has been power crept somewhat by Trinity Ghoul. Continuing the discussion of elemental based exotics, Sunshot is a 150 RPM exotic hand cannon initially acquired from Hawthorne during the Red War campaign. This was the second of the three options the players could choose from. The exotic perk made the gun shoot solar splash damage and enemies who were killed by Sunshot would explode, potentially creating chain kills. This made Sunshot a fantastic weapon to clear out rooms quickly, and it became a fan favorite for both PvE and PvP. I know that the Sunshot can be a little tricky to aim in PvP, and it can definitely take a while to get used to, but if you feel like you're struggling with your aim in Destiny, I might actually have something that can help you out. After spending a crazy amount of time looking for the perfect mousepad, I never found exactly what I was looking for. So instead, I just made my own. Wow. In case you missed it, I just launched a new gaming peripherals company called Ember Edge. Our first product is a mousepad that strikes the perfect balance between speed and control, and it's huge so you have plenty of space for aiming. Hundreds of people have now been using our pad, including many of the content creators that you probably know in the Destiny world, and the feedback has been incredible. I get messages nearly every day from people telling me how much they love their new pad. If you want to try one out for yourself and help us dethrone the big brands, you can check out emberedge.com. I'll also have it linked in the description. Although these days hand cannons are generally outclassed in PvE by other weapon archetypes, one weapon from Vanilla Destiny 2 was in a league of its own. Midnight Coup was a hand cannon that dropped from the Leviathan raid and had a static role of Rampage and Outlaw, making it the premier hand cannon of early Destiny 2. This gun was a must-have in PvE, capable of one-tapping most red bar enemies in the game, especially once you got up to the maximum stacks of Rampage. Midnight Coup was without a doubt a fan favorite and used all the way up through the release of Forsaken. Although the gun was Sunset and Beyond Light, this gun still holds a special place in players' hearts. The Sins of the Past the Legendary Rocket Launcher combined with Cold Heart was one of the best DPS options in early Destiny 2. It had cluster bombs which made rockets do frankly insane amounts of damage. Combined with rally barricades which automatically reloaded your weapons at the time, players could absolutely melt bosses. Cluster bombs would eventually receive a big nerf, taking Sins of the Past and similar rockets off the table as a top option, however rocket launchers have since made a comeback recently and we'll touch on that a little bit later. I'll also give a shout out to Curtain Call which featured cluster bombs as well and didn't require running the raid to acquire. Legend of Acrius is an exotic shotgun acquired from completing a lengthy quest that began with a Leviathan raid. After defeating Kallus, players would have to complete several challenges, including a difficult version of the Arm Stealer Strike, killing a bunch of Cabal, and farming Emperor Seals, which required players to run the raid multiple times. The reward for completing this quest was one of the best shotguns in the game, capable of absolutely annihilating anything that came across your path. The exotic Kallus also improved the gun, increasing the reserves and the reload speed. Unfortunately, with the release of Beyond Light, the Leviathan and its respective raid layers were sunset from the game. The Legend of Acrius was moved to the Monument of Lost Lights and has remained there ever since. I'll be honest, the release of the first Destiny 2 expansion, Curse of Osiris, did not do too much for the game. The meta stayed mostly the same as vanilla Destiny 2 and random rolls still didn't exist yet, meaning there really wasn't anything to chase. The only notable exception here was Prometheus Lens, which was a trace rifle that grew a giant ball of solar damage the longer you fired it and for one specific weekend, it made PvP an absolute madhouse. If you want to learn more about the history of PvP weapons, check out my video on the 37 weapons that define the Destiny 2 PvP meta. It's linked in the description. On May 8th, 2018, the second Destiny 2 expansion, Warmind, was released. Alongside it, there were tons of new weapons, a decent endgame experience, and one of the most challenging day one raids we've ever seen. 
Warmind introduced the Escalation Protocol activity on Mars and with it the Ikolo shotgun. This shotgun was the best close range gun for PvE bar none in the game and it would remain there for quite a long period of time. The gun featured the perk Trench Barrel which drastically improved the damage output. After meleeing a target you'd get a massive increase to your damage, reload speed, and handling while the perk was active. You could easily burn through an entire magazine with buff damage which made the Ikolo shotgun the best burst DPS option in the entire game. I would give it the distinction as the best weapon from this expansion, but there's actually a few guns down the line that edge it out slightly. Unfortunately for the Ikolos, the Trench Barrel perk would eventually be nerfed during Season of the Drifter. The step buff you gained would cut off after firing 3 shots. In this one patch, the gun went from being almost a required part of your average loadout to sitting in players' vaults and never really returned to its former glory. On July 17th, 2018, a patch was added to the game. It was discovered that by completing a specific public event on IO and killing a mini boss that spawned off to the side, a portal would be opened. Interacting with this portal would then begin a secret mission, the Whisper. Successfully completing a run of this mini dungeon in under 20 minutes would reward players with the exotic heavy sniper rifle, Whisper of the Worm. This was a sniper paying tribute to the Black Hammer and the Black Spindle from Destiny 1. This exotic instantly became one of the highest damaging weapons in all of Destiny and was effectively mandatory for any player hoping to beat the raids. Its exotic perk White Nail would refill the magazine after landing 3 rapid precision hits. If that sounds broken, well it's probably because it was. This gun was basically an automatic pick in the heavy slot for most players during pretty much the entirety of the gun's early existence. Whisper would eventually be nerfed in Season of Opulence. The perk White Nail was changed to still refill the gun's magazine, but now it would pull ammo from reserves instead of creating bullets out of thin air. After its nerf, Whisper was still a good option, but just never as powerful as when it was first introduced. The next gun on our list is kind of a special case. Wardcliffe Coil is a rocket launcher that was released with Destiny 2 Vanilla but received some special attention during the prestige Leviathan's World First Raid Race. The gun itself is an interesting exotic. It fires a volley of rockets that does extra damage to vehicles. However, during the prestige Leviathan race, a glitch allowed players to effectively have infinite heavy ammo with a Wardcliffe Coil. This was quickly dubbed the Coil Glitch and the exotic rose to infamy after Clan Redeem used the glitch to secure the World's First Race. There's plenty of opinions out there about this particular event, but regardless of what you think, the Wargliffe Coil and Coil Glitching became a definite part of Destiny history. Keep an eye on this next one. Sleeper Simulant is an exotic linear fusion rifle that was initially released in Destiny 1 and later re-released in Destiny 2 with the launch of Warmind. The exotic perk Dornrushkin allows players to overpenetrate enemies and bounce the lasers off of walls. It was definitely a lot of fun to use when it first launched, but it really started to shine more in Season 15 when players had access to the mod Particle Deconstruction. Regardless of how powerful it was in the particular meta, it was always funny when a laser bounced back and accidentally kills you or your teammates. We finally got to the last elemental pick from Hawthorne from Vanilla Destiny 2. Alongside Sunshot and Risk Runner, Graviton Lance was a void option that players could acquire from Hawthorne during the Red War campaign. When compared with two other picks, the Graviton Lance was, well, underpowered to say the least. However, with the launch of Warmind, it received a huge buff that changed how the gun worked. When you kill the target with a Graviton Lance, the gun would spawn void particles from the body that would explode and chain to other targets. Suddenly, this pulse rifle could clear out entire rooms of adds instantly. Forsaken launched on September 4th, 2018 and it changed the landscape of Destiny 2 forever. Random rolls on weapons returned, special weapons were back, and we had one of the best areas of the game that we would ever experience. With the launch of Forsaken, we received two brand new areas, the Tangled Shore and the Dreaming City, and 10 days after the DLC launch, the Last Wish raid opened. This was the hardest day one raid ever and only 12 players cleared the raid within the first 24 hour period. Sorry Dado. With Riven defeated and her heart cleansed, players gained access to one of the most insane weapons of the era, the 1000 Voices Exotic Fusion Rifle. This gun fired a giant continuous beam of death that would explode after a slight delay. There was a ton of fun to use in both PvP and PvE and became one of the most highly sought after weapons of the era. Unfortunately, it's become a victim of power creep in modern times. It enjoyed a brief resurgence during the Season of the Lost with Particle Deconstruction, but otherwise it hasn't really been seen in the limelight as much as it used to be. It's still a fun pick and a decent damage dealer if you have it though. During this era, a lesser used exotic shotgun, the Tractor Cannon, received an important change. The Warmind expansion buffed Tractor Cannon to debuff enemies to receive 50% more damage from void sources for 10 seconds. But in Forsaken, this debuff was changed to instead deal 33% more damage from any source. This was a major bump to team damage since many of the top DPS options were non-void sources. Tractor Cannon was used extensively to buff team DPS in many in-game encounters, plus it's just really fun to boop enemies around. Thunderlord is an exotic heavy machine gun that initially launched way back in vanilla Destiny 1. It made its return to Destiny 2 during Forsaken in the Festival of the Lost Questline, The Lost Cryptarch. 
Its exotic perk, Rain Havoc, summons lightning whenever you land a final blow on any target and it now also stuns Overload Champions. In the modern era, Thunderlord is a very good pick for ad clear, especially with the addition of the Arc 3.0 subclasses, however it used to also be quite a bit more powerful. When it first launched in Destiny 2, it was more than a little broken. Focusing damage on a singular target would absolutely melt health bars, I mean take a look at some of these clips. Thunderlord eventually got hit with a series of nerfs, reducing the machine gun's usage, but not without good reason. During the Forsaken era, we also received an early version of the seasonal model that we now know today. The first of these content drops was known as Black Armory or Season of the Forge. With it, we were introduced to the vendor 801, a new suite of weapons, and a new raid, Scourge of the Past. One of the most popular weapons of this era was the Hammerhead Legendary Machine Gun. This machine gun had an incredibly clean design, and it boasted some absolutely nutty perk combinations for both PvE and PvP. This included Feeding Frenzy and Rampage. It was the machine gun of the era. Unfortunately, it's since been sunset, but it still holds a special place in many players' hearts. Speaking of the Black Armory weapons, let's discuss the exotic that was the forefront of the season, Izanagi's Burden. This exotic sniper has a unique perk that allows players to combine the 4 round magazine into a single high damage bullet. When combined with a tech known as Reload Cancelling, players could burn through the magazine and the reserves in no time, making this one of the best exotic DPS options, especially down the road a little bit later. To receive the gun, players would have to complete a multi-week quest involving the seasonal activity at the Forges. It was absolutely worth it though, and for a long time Izanagi was a required part of many raid loadouts. Back in Season 3, Bungie introduced us to a new concept, Pinnacle Weapons. These were static weapons that came as the rewards for intense lengthy quests. Pinnacle weapons were the precursors to the ritual weapons, but significantly stronger. They each had a unique perk that could not be found on any other weapon in the game, effectively making them legendary weapons with exotic perks. The first few of them were mostly geared to PvP players, including the Redrix Claymore, Luna's Howl, and Not Forgotten. In Season 5 with the Black Armory, Pinnacle weapons were expanded to include one for each of the three core playlists, Strikes, Gambit, and Crucible. Each of the options added this season were fairly attractive weapons, but one in particular really stood out. The Crucible Pinnacle weapon that season was the Mountaintop Grenade Launcher. It was a weapon that would strike fear in the hearts of both Guardians and PvE mobs. The quest to get the Mountaintop was brutal. It required a lengthy grind in the competitive playlist and nearly a thousand grenade launcher kills. However, players who completed the quest would receive a weapon well worth the grind. The Mountaintop's custom perk was called Micro Missile. It meant that the grenade would fire in a perfectly straight line. Combined with the auto-loading meta at the time, Mountaintop was easy to use and can pump out some absolutely crazy damage. It would eventually receive a nerf just before Beyond Light, reducing the damage and the blast radius of the grenade launcher. And when combined with sunsetting and the removal of auto-loading Wells of Radiance and Rally Barricades, it's since really become unused in PvE. But for a significant period of time, it was by far the best grenade launcher in the game. Speaking of grenade launchers, let's talk Anarchy. This is an exotic heavy grenade launcher that was released with the Scourge of the Past raid and was a random drop from the end of the raid. This grenade launcher was interesting because it didn't really function like any other ones in the game. The exotic perk would allow grenades to be stuck to enemies for a set amount of time and then chain arc damage to other grenades fired from the launcher. You could also set up fun little traps for enemies on the ground. It would deal impressive damage over time, allowing the user to swap over to another weapon and then continue doing additional damage. This exotic became a crucial part of the hot swapping meta and we'll touch on that a little bit more later. On March 5th, 2019, Season of the Drifter began, kicking off the only real blemish of year 2. I'm sure some people out there like Gambit Prime, but this season was a little bit lackluster compared to the likes of Black Armory in the later season of Opulence. Thankfully, there was a bright spot in what otherwise would have been a huge bust. Zero Hour was a secret mission that was released on May 8th, 2019. It was comparable to the first secret mission, The Whisper. If players managed to complete Zero Hour in under 20 minutes, they would gain access to the exotic pulse rifle Outbreak Perfected. This pulse rifle is a redux of Outbreak Prime, its Destiny 1 counterpart. Its exotic perk, the Corruption Spreads, infects the target with Siva Nanites, increasing the pulse rifle's damage against the target. It also stacks with other players using the gun, meaning you could reach some absolutely nutty stacks of nanites against bosses. It was a popular pick against the raid boss Galron a season later, and it's hard not to like that Siva aesthetic. Here's crossing our fingers that we'll get that zero hour mission back once again from the content vault. When you think of SMGs in Destiny 2 history, one option really stands out. The Reckless Legendary SMG was a pinnacle weapon from the season of the Drifter. This SMG is insane in every way possible. It had a unique perk called Master of Arms which increased the damage of Reckless after getting a kill with any weapon. This allowed body shots to deal the same amount of damage as headshots and melt any enemies in sight. Reckless was without a doubt the best SMG in the game, bar none. It was even one of the main reasons that the concept of sunsetting was later introduced into the game. In the modern era, it has a spiritual successor in the SMG Funnel Web, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. 
following Season of the Drifter, we received what was possibly the best seasonal drop that we've ever had, Season of Opulence. Alongside it, we got a new raid, new weapons, new armor, and the most popular seasonal activity by a landslide, the Menagerie. During the season, one archetype became the true DPS meta, heavy grenade launchers with spike grenades. In particular, the swarm of the Raven grenade launcher became extremely popular and it was one of the most sought after drops from Iron Banner. Alongside this, the meta and season of opulence remained mostly stable. Mountaintop and Recluse were so good that there was effectively no reason to use anything else, and then you toss on Swarm of the Raven and you'd have a set loadout. However, some changes coming soon would shake things up in a big way. On October 1st, 2019, Destiny 2's expansion Shadowkeep was released, and alongside it, Bungie made some huge changes to how Warlock's Roll of Radiance and Titan's Raleigh Barricade worked. Previously, these abilities would instantly reload weapons while they were active, allowing players to unleash death on bosses without really worrying about reloading. With the release of Shadowkeep though, Bungie changed abilities that automatically reloaded weapons to simply boost that reload speed. While this was a much needed change for the health of the game, it significantly shook up the meta. In the power vacuum, an unlikely contender shot up to the front of the pack, the Izanagi's Burden. Although Bungie had now removed autoloading abilities from the game, an option was still available, the perk Autoloading Holster, which could roll on certain legendary rockets and grenade launchers. One of the premier choices became the Wendigo GL3, which was the Vanguard Pinnacle weapon from Season of Opulence. While it didn't have spike grenades, its pinnacle perk was Explosive Light. Picking up orbs of light would increase the damage on every grenade, making for some absolutely insane damage rotations. Unfortunately, Shadowkeep didn't really introduce that many new interesting weapons. The Izanagi's Burden and Autoloading Grenade Launcher meta remained for much of the year. However, one new weapon would become embedded in the meta for many years to come. Divinity is the raid exotic introduced with the Garden of Salvation raid. It's an exotic trace rifle that debuffs and disrupts a target and creates a large bubble around the target that acts as a massive crit spot. It's since become a requirement for most raid groups, making it nearly impossible to miss a critical hit on a boss. In recent times, the debuff provided by Divinity has been nerfed from 30% to 15%, which is still a nice damage debuff. It's definitely still a top choice for endgame PvE, and it will likely remain so for the foreseeable future. While Shadowkeep itself didn't introduce anything too out of the ordinary, the final season of Year 3, Season of Arrivals, certainly did. To start, we got the spiritual successor to the D1 fan favorite Dark Drinker in the form of a new sword, the Fallen Guillotine. The sword's heavy attack would cause the player to enter the spin to win mode and repeatedly hit any target unfortunate enough to be in that radius. It also had the ability to roll the perk Whirlwind Blade, which massively boosted the damage that it dealt. On release, a god roll Fallen Guillotine did absolutely insane amounts of damage. This was the top sword in the game and was only replaced pretty recently. It was also a legendary weapon, which meant it could be paired with the next entry on our list. It's pretty common for Destiny 2 Season Pass weapons to not be the best in slot picks. There are some interesting niche choices out there from time to time, but on the whole, they're kind of outclassed by exotics that players actually have to earn. However, there is one exotic that definitely goes against this trend. Wither Horde is a single shot kinetic grenade launcher and has remained a top choice since its release in the season pass during Season of Arrivals. The grenade launcher fires a Taken Blight, which on collision with a target would slowly damage the target until the effect ran out or the target was dead. It can also be fired onto the ground directly to deal some impressive AoE damage to multiple targets. It's still definitely in use today. Seasonal mods like Breach and Clear and Weak and Clear allowed Wither Horde to continuously debuff a target, making it one of the best choices for endgame content these days. Towards the end of Year 3, the Izanagi autoloading grenade launcher meta was hit with a pretty substantial nerf. This loadout relied heavily on being able to reload cancel Izanagi's burden when creating that high damage bullet. Bungie changed how reload cancelling worked and it no longer applied to that special animation, which absolutely gutted the damage that players could deal with Izanagi's burden. This one nerf completely shifted the meta for the foreseeable future. Players quickly realized that hot swapping between two autoloading slug shotguns though could crank out some pretty impressive damage numbers. And to add to the fun, another old exotic made a reappearance, Anarchy. See, I told you that one would come back. One of the best options for hot swapping was the first in, last out slug shotgun. While this shotgun was initially released during Vanilla Destiny 2, it was re-released during Season of Arrivals with a brand new perk pool including autoloading holster and vorpal weapon. First in, last out could also be paired with the next entry on our list and would create what would become a staple of the damage metas for the next few seasons, the hot swapping meta. Obviously, you need a slug shotgun in both the kinetic and energy slots in order to hot swap between them. However, until Shadowkeep, legendary kinetic slug shotguns just simply didn't exist. Blast from Mer was the first of its kind. It's not all that special to write home about, it has a pretty average perk pool for PvE. However, its existence led to the creation of the hot swapping meta, and that's why we included it in the video. It was almost immediately power crept though by another option, one with a much better perk pool, a cooler looking design, and that's the next weapon on our list. On November 10th, 2020, Beyond Light was released. 
This expansion introduced us to the frozen wastelands of Europa, the shiny interiors of Bray Exoscience, and the haunting silence of the Deep Stone Crypt. As far as the meta went, hot swapping between two special weapons was gaining popularity. As fate would have it, one of the weapons that could drop from the Deep Stone Crypt raid was the kinetic slug shotgun, Heritage. It had a unique perk exclusive to the raid weapons called Reconstruction. This automatically reloads the weapon up to double the actual magazine size from reserves. This meant you could have a shotgun with a dozen slugs in one magazine that would continue reloading while you were using it or while it was stowed. Upon release, Heritage instantly replaced Blast Rumor as the go-to shotgun to chase. Thus, the hot swapping meta truly began. Heritage, first and last out, and Anarchy would become the new damage meta and it would remain that way for quite some time. With Beyond Light's release, pinnacle weapons became a thing of the past. They were replaced with the less powerful but easier to acquire ritual weapons. These wouldn't have any special perks, but they would feature some interesting perk combinations that weren't really available on other weapons. The ritual weapon from Season 13 was a legendary special grenade launcher known as Salvador Salvo. This grenade launcher was notable for its PvE perk combo of Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction. This perk combo was absolutely insane for clearing large groups of enemies, and it was made even better in Season 14 with the introduction of the mod Breach and Clear. In Season 14, Vault of Glass, the original Destiny 1 raid, made its return into Destiny 2, revamping the encounters, weapons, armor, and exclusive exotic. Vex Mythoclast, an absolute beast of a fusion rifle in Destiny 1, was changed a little bit for Destiny 2. In Destiny 1, Vex was the only fusion rifle in the game in the primary slot and had the perk Timeless Mythoclast, which allowed it to be fired like an auto rifle on trigger pull. This meant it had no charge up time like a typical fusion rifle. In Destiny 2, the weapon functioned in a pretty similar fashion, but it became a solar weapon and it also had the ability to transform into a mini linear fusion rifle as an alternate fire mode. While this gun wasn't amazing when it first came to Destiny 2, it was soon heavily buffed and became a fantastic option in both PvE and PvP. It really began to shine during Season of the Lost when the mod Particle Deconstruction was introduced. It could absolutely slaughter minor targets and it wasn't a bad pick as a secondary DPS option if you really needed one. It hasn't seen quite as much use in recent seasons, but it's still a really fun option if you have it. Speaking of particle deconstruction, it's high time that we talk about Linears. Linear Fusion Rifles, or LFRs, have been near the top of the damage meta for quite some time now. Players began to realize how good Linear Fusion Rifles were during Season of the Lost when particle deconstruction was one of the seasonal mods. This mod provided additional damage for a short time after you hit a target with either a Fusion Rifle or a Linear Fusion Rifle. One of the first LFRs to gain wide recognition was the Stasis LFR from Trials of Osiris, Reed's Regret. It could roll with the perk Triple Tap and Firing Line and it was a great damage choice. Unfortunately, due to the fact that it was locked behind Trials of Osiris, a lot of PvE players wrote this one off. Some older weapons ran to reappearance during this time as well. 1000 Voices was brought back from the dead due to its ability to apply the maximum stacks of particle deconstruction with just one trigger pull. Sleeper Simulate became once again a pretty good choice in the meta. And I'll also give a shout out to the Threaded Needle, which could roll with Auto Loading Holster and Vorpal Weapon. While Linears were a fantastic DPS option, Particle Deconstruction also affected regular fusion rifles. Cartesian Coordinate was a fusion rifle that relaunched with the Season of the Chosen, and it had some insane rolls for everyday gameplay. While regular fusion rifles have somewhat fallen out of the meta, Cartesian Coordinate is still one of the better options for players who want to use fusion rifles in PvE. On December 7th, 2021, Bungie released the 30th Anniversary DLC. This was a mini expansion that added weapons, armor, and more goodies to celebrate their history as a developer. Some of these treats included weapons based on previous games like Halo and previous weapons from Destiny's past. The most important of these weapons was of course the Galahorn Exotic Rocket Launcher. This was reintroduced mostly the same as its original D1 counterpart. Its exotic perk Wolfpack Rounds fires additional seeking rockets alongside the main payload. However, it also had an additional perk exclusive to Destiny 2, Pack Hunter. This new perk grants wolf pack rounds to every other legendary rocket launcher in the player's fire team. Thanks to this perk, rockets became much stronger contenders in the PvE meta. Options like Hothead and Bump in the Night when paired with Galarhorn made for some pretty crazy damage numbers. This re-release of the Galarhorn single-handedly brought rockets back into the rotation for DPS options and they've remained a pretty good alternative to linear fusion rifles ever since. One of the most interesting additions from the 30th anniversary pack were two swords that could drop from the Dares of Eternity, which was a core playlist from the expansion. Half Truce and the other half are Arc and Void based swords respectively, and their design is based on the energy sword from the Halo franchise. However, these two swords introduced a perk that no other weapon in the game had, Eager Edge. This gives the player a brief window in which the sword's lunge distance is greatly increased after pulling it off their back. By timing this perk, players can leap forward and travel much quicker than they would normally be able to. On top of this, the player base discovered some additional tech that could be performed with an Eager Edge sword. Shatter skating and well skating is a tech that involves pressing a few separate inputs while having an Eager Edge sword equipped. 
When done correctly, a player will be launched ridiculously fast and can travel large distances almost instantaneously. These swords revolutionize both travel and speedrunning and are incredibly fun to play around with. I highly recommend picking one up if you haven't tried it yet. On February 22nd, 2022, a nearly 6 month delay after its initial launch date, Destiny 2 The Witch Queen was released. Alongside it, we got a new campaign, destinations, new weapons, new armor, new exotics, and a new raid, but we also got something new. The Witch Queen also launched with a legendary option of the campaign, which cranked up the difficulty and provided challenge for those who were tough enough to take it on. The Witch Queen campaign garnered almost universal praise from the Destiny community, and it really felt like Destiny's storytelling was finally back to where we really wanted it to be. 11 days after the expansion launch, the gates opened up for the Vow of the Disciple raid. Although the day one raid race was plagued with server issues, the raid itself was visually stunning. The encounters were fairly complex and they required a working knowledge of a bank of symbols. The loot from this raid was likewise amazing. One example is Cataclysmic, which is a solar linear fusion rifle that has access to a unique perk combination. Cataclysmic can roll with 4th times the charm and bait and switch, which is a perk that's only found on weapons from the Vow of the Disciple raid. If you hit a target with all three of your weapons, whichever one has bait and switch will gain a 35% increase for a short period of time. Because of this perk combo, Cataclysmic can pump out a ton of damage and still have plenty of ammo in the reserves. This makes it easily one of the best linear fuse rifles in the game. But that wasn't the only great weapon from this raid. Of course, something would be amiss if we didn't talk about Forbearance. It's an arc-based special grenade launcher that's notable for a few reasons. To begin, Forbearance is a waveframe grenade launcher which is pretty special all by itself. Prior to Lightfall, there's only been 4 of these in the entire game, and one of them was Sunset. On top of that, it's the only arc-based waveframe in the game, making it stand out even more. Regarding the perks, Forbearance has access to one of the best perk combinations for grenade launchers, Ambitious Assassin and Chain Reaction. Remember how I said that Salvager Salvo got power crept by another better option? Well, that would be Forbearance. It also has one last thing going for it, its Origin Trait. These are like a static perk that all weapons from a particular source are guaranteed to have. In this case, Forbearance has access to the Vow of the Disciple origin trait, Soul Drinker. When you reload your weapon, you regain health based on how many enemies did you kill with that magazine. This is really, really good for Forbearance because it's a single shot grenade launcher. You are constantly reloading which means you're constantly getting your health back. Overall, this grenade launcher is just absolutely nuts. It's fantastic for clearing out rooms of enemies, although it doesn't work particularly well for boss damage. It's absolutely worth picking one up though if you have the chance. With the release of Beyond Light, the Recluse Pinnacle SMG was Sunset, leaving it to collect cobwebs in most players' vaults. However, in the Witch Queen, we got an alternative. Funnelweb was effectively the spiritual successor of the Recluse. It uses the same model and has the same feel as the Recluse, although it doesn't have access to the perk Master of Arms. It also has access to the origin trait Vice Stinger, which has a chance to automatically reload your magazine when you hit a target. It was also a naturally great pick with the Volatile Rounds meta of the Witch Queen. Overall, Funnelweb is just an excellent pick as a Void SMG, and it might only be outclassed by some of the other recent options. Continuing with the meta of linear fusion rifles, the Taipan FR4 is a Void-based linear, and it's an excellent choice for Void builds. While it's not quite as strong as Cataclysmic, the Taipan has the unique trait of being craftable without needing any red border drops. After completing a short quest that introduces players to the weapon crafting system, players are given the completed crafting pattern for Taipan and this allows literally any player to craft a perfect linear fusion rifle without any grinding. Taipan has access to perk combinations like triple tap and firing line which is incredibly good for activities that need fire teams. However, it also has access to frenzy in that second column which is a decent choice for solo players. This makes for a great alternative to players who don't want to grind out for that cataclysmic role but still want to deal some decent damage. It's absolutely worth crafting especially in the current meta of linear fusion rifles. I mentioned that a few SMGs out there could compete with the funnel web and we've reached our first option. The Kalos Mini Tool is a solar SMG that initially launched back in the Season of Opulence, but was relaunched during Season of the Haunted. If you want a solar SMG, this is the gun for you. The Mini Tool can roll with the perk Incandescent, which applies Scorch to enemies in the surrounding areas when you get a kill. In the right loadout, this is easily one of the best options for solar 3.0 builds regardless of the class. In that same vein, we're bringing back another old pick. The Ikelos SMG is a gun that's been released 3 different times over the course of Destiny 2's history. It initially launched as a Void SMG back in the Warmind expansion. It was re-released during Season of Arrivals as an Arc SMG and it was widely regarded as one of the best SMGs of the era, especially due to its ability to generate Warmind cells. And now it's been re-released again during Season of the Seraph with a refreshed perk pool and the ability to be crafted, and once again it's one of the premier primary weapons in the game. This time it has access to the perk Volt Shot, allowing players to chain lightning between targets for a short period after reloading the weapon after a kill. Like the Kalos Mini Tool, this is another weapon that you should absolutely be chasing if you don't have one yet. It works wonders especially with the ARC 3.0 subclass system. Retrofit Escapade is a heavy machine gun launch with the Season of the Seraph. 
The vast majority of the time, machine guns are not really used for boss damage. The archetype is really better suited for ad clear and mechanics, but not really for pure DPS. However, there was a brief period of time where Retrofit Escapade was competing with linear fuse rifles for DPS. This machine gun has access to a perk called Target Lock, which heavily buffs up the weapon damage the longer the weapon's firing at a target. When you combine this with volatile rounds, Retrofit is doing absurd amounts of damage for a machine gun, and players out there were wondering if this might make up the new meta. Well, unfortunately, this wasn't intentional. Bungie eventually changed how fast those volatile rounds could proc, which gutted the damage that Retrofit could do. It's still a good machine gun, but melting bosses is no longer on the menu. On February 28th, 2023, Bungie released Lightfall. This expansion tells the story leading up to the conclusion of the Light vs. Dark saga that's been unfolding for nearly a decade now. There are a lot of new weapons added from this expansion, but their impact into the meta isn't too clear yet. Thunderlord has made a reappearance, we have a few new exotic glaives to play with, and a handful of interesting legendary weapons. We'll have to wait and see what new metas form as each season gets released this year and we have some time to explore all the different options. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet, and up next check out my video on the history of the Destiny 2 PvP meta. It's the video on screen and linked in the description.